वंदे पन्नक भूषण शशिधर वंदे पशूना पति वंदे सूर्य शशाकनयन वंदे मुकुंद प्रिय वंदे भक्तजन आश्रय वरद वंदे भक्तजन आश्रय वरद वंदे शिव शंकर friends very often several questions arise in our minds one of the questions is what is the goal of life at another question for the people in prashant kudir will be what is the goal of this yoga practice why do we come to prashanti why do we do any particular branch of study here what for is this training what is its fruit what is its aim what is its goal what is it i get what is the profit what is the benefit when we raise this question if we analyze it we make yoga the means for something else it need not be a means for getting something it can as well be the goal every effort may bring you the fruit effort itself may be a fruit example you travel to reach a particular destination reaching the destination is the goal it is the fruit it is the effect but there can be a travel just for the sake of travel no destination i enjoy traveling there the means and the end are one and the same i travel there is no necessity for me to reach any particular destination traveling itself is my goal and similarly you walk for health we stroll it is not a specific purpose that we have in our mind we just walk walking itself is the goal of walking knowledge to gain something money some profit some discovery knowledge for the sake of knowledge similarly you have art for the sake of art i draw a picture and i enjoy drawing it painting it i don't want anything else love for the sake of love prayer for the sake of prayer work for the sake of work that is your when means and end merge together they become one with each other that's yoga here in the bhagavad gita arjuna arrives as an ordinary man non yogi a non yogi is a person of dilemma a person of indecisive nature a person expecting the fruit a person who is not very cool and comfortable in the mind peaceful he is agitated disturbed worried anxiety ridden all these qualities can be seen in arjun in the first chapter his dilemma to fight or not to fight to love or not to love to sleep or not to sleep we are not in a position to decide to what is it i get if i fight if i get something out of my fighting of the war is it worthy of enjoyment when so many widows are there when so many orphans are there so you expect a fruit 
and you are in a dilemma, you are disturbed in the mind, that is the quality of an ordinary person before the commencement of the Bhagavad Gita discourse from Sri Krishna. First chapter you find the mind of an ordinary person and then Krishna begins, this is a psychic weakness. Be strong mentally and then throughout the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna tries to emphasize on one particular point, may you be a yogi, tasmat yogi bhava arjuna. Hitherto you are not a yogi, now you begin to be a yogi. Seventeen chapters of Krishna's lecture, at the end Arjuna declares, Nasto Mohaha, all my delusion is driven away, all my dilemma is removed, all my doubts have been shattered. Sthitos me gata sandeha, having lost all doubt, I am established firmly, strongly, with the strength of mind. Karishye vacharantava, nasto moha, sthitos me gata sandeha, karishye vacharantava, I will do what you asked me to do. This is how the whole is. That means before Bhagavad Gita, Krishna's discourse, after Krishna's discourse, from non-yogi to yoga. Here, first he wanted something fruit. Next, fighting itself is the fruit. What is the summon substance? Krishna asks Arjuna to fight as, number one, as an instrument, Nimitta matram bhava sadhya sachi. You are but an instrument in my hands. You are a tool. If you are like a tool, you don't know the pairs of opposites. You are undisturbed by the ups and downs, failures and successes, good, bad, right, wrong, etc. The spoon is an instrument. It is in my hand, I stir the cup of coffee. I use it to move the liquids or the other edible substances. The taste of it is not felt by the spoon, it is only an instrument. And it moves in the way I move it. When each individual can make himself an instrument or a tool in the hands of something supreme, sublime, extraordinary, our minds need not get disturbed. The postman, the instrument delivers the marriage invitation. He does not laugh. He delivers the death message. He does not weep. He does not know what it contains. He delivers both. both. This is how every activity can be performed as but an instrument. Point number one. Two, you can fight as it is a sport. It's a game. Life is a game. You play the many roles. You play the role of a father, you play the role of a husband, you play the role of a wife, you play the role and while playing the role to the best of your ability, you do it. And in the heart of hearts, ah, I am playing very well. I am playing the game of this life. I am playing the game or role of a teacher, a speaker, etc. I put in my heart, at the same time I am aware of the truth that I am a player, I am a sportsman and that very feeling gives us the very highest happiness, feeling of a sportsman. Three, you are the substratum, undisturbed. When we go to the theatre, when we see the cinema, there will be a bloodshed, there will be flood, there may be a love scene, 
there may be a death scene behind all these scenes is the white screen like that we can be absorbed we can be the substratum we can be at the bottom without getting affected or disturbed by the movement of the film there may be a death scene there may be a playful scene there may be a duet song i can remain the same point number 4 you be a spectator you are in the theater you see the film the first scene hero's description second scene heroine's description love scene and the villain's scene you just see it you know it is all only a drama be a spectator fight as though you are a spectator do as though you are the substratum screen do as a sportsman do as an instrument choose any one all of them are happiness there everything will be to your liking you are not disturbed you are always peaceful not only peaceful you will enjoy the game of life and if you take yoga to be a means leading to samadhi then all the activities initially give you happiness or absence of agony intellectual exercise for happiness emotional exuberance for peacefulness or for escapism or for happiness and physical activities there are only three types of activities one is physical doing the other is feeling or emotion the third is intellectual exercise activity intellectual emotional physical why do we do them for happiness and if you take a small example we all see the cricket match on the tv screen there is a bowler there is a batsman there is the cricket mat and there are the three wickets the bowler runs has the ball in his hand and at a great speed he runs and hurls the ball the ball moves when it is spun from the hand of the bowler it comes 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 at great speed and it touches the three wickets the wickets fall people clap and jump the scene is over in a fraction of a second at that time my friend has come and i am talking to him i have missed that wonderful scene therefore the telecasting relay station for the benefit of the audience will replay it the bowler is running slow motion the ball is held slow motion the ball moves 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 slowly and slowly and slowly and when it touches the three wickets they fall and the ball has touched the ground then he makes it still photography my dear viewers see see as long as you want to see our physical activities are for happiness our emotional activities are for happiness our intellectual exercises are for happiness and when we have the happiness it is all done quickly a yogi has the flash he will slow down and he will make an analysis of the happiness the mind ball is coming 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 slowly the intellectual activity is slowed down what is happening inside the ocean of bliss inside is covered or controlled or held by the three wickets tamo guna rajo guna and sattva guna these three are to be removed that activity it throws away it is excitement for an ordinary man a yogi 
will see the movement of the mind slowing down, slowing down, intellectual activity slowing down mentally and when the three wickets are thrown down in the slow motion, there is stillness, there is calmness, there is abundance of happiness, there is the overflowing of bliss, there is that ocean of tranquility, there is that sea of bliss when the mind is lost in that ocean. It is annihilation of the mind. Chitta vritti nirodhaha. There is no further movement, there is no further activity, there is no further disturbance and the mind is just buried or stilled on the ground or in the ocean of happiness and that state when the mind is lost, when the mind is buried, when the mind is annihilated, when the mind goes deep into that ocean of bliss inside, it is total samadhi, unaware of everything, that is the cessation of activity, cessation of psychic activity, intellectual activity, Krishna therefore says, you can make yoga your way of life, enjoy it. If you want to make it a means, observe, slow down, so that your mind is gradually buried, inhalated, and that state of mindlessness is total absence of any unhappiness, and it is total happiness May you be blissful. You can take yoga as means. You can take yoga as the gift or the fruit or the benefit or the very goal of life. You can have both of them combined in yoga. In whatever way you do, we can have the thrill of yoga. We can be yogis. May we all by the grace of Lord Krishna who is a yogi himself, every action of his is but a yogic action. Let us become good yogis so that every activity, every state is sweet to us, enjoyable to us, either throughout or at the end, either as means or as effort. Let us enjoy the bliss of yoga. May we all, by the grace of Krishna, become yogis having come to Prashanti Kutir. Let us not return as ordinary people. Let us return to our places as Siddha Purushas, as yogis, as peaceful people, as blissful people. Let's now meditate on Sri Krishna.